Hello, I'm Dean Sturm. Welcome to Rogue River, Oregon in 2012 as we celebrate our centennial year. Rogue River is home to the National Rooster Crow Contest. It is a vibrant community with beautiful parks, a fine school system, world-class fishing and recreational activities, and as Mayor John Bond likes to say, great people. A century ago, the people of the town, then called Woodville, could not have foreseen what the city would be like in 2012. Pilot John Rasher, following the westward path of the Rogue River at an altitude of 600 feet, flew over the valley of the Rogue State Park, circled over the mouth of Evans Creek, and over the downtown area of the city of Rogue River. From both the air and from Interstate 5, the Depot Street Bridge, completed in 2006, is the most striking landmark of the city. Long before there were any bridges in Oregon, over 8,500 years ago, there were Native American settlements in the region. These people made their living gathering acorns, hunting deer and elk, and fishing. The 1804 Lewis and Clark expedition was commissioned by President Thomas Jefferson to find a practical route to the Pacific by way of the Missouri and Columbia rivers. In 1824, Hudson's Bay Company set up its fur trading headquarters on the Columbia River at Fort Vancouver. By the late 1820s and 30s, fur trappers were traveling from the Willamette Valley to California along the Siskiyou Trail, which was itself based on Native American pathways. From its beginning near Crater Lake, the Rogue River flows through Rogue River Gorge and then runs 215 miles westward from the Cascade Range to the Pacific at Gold Beach. Evans Creek is one of its tributaries, meeting the river just west of the Depot Street Bridge in the city of Rogue River. In 1851, Davis Coyote Evans built a ferry at Tailholt where the present bridge is. The town was named Woodville after John Woods in 1872 when logging and mining were the first industries. In 1912, the town council voted 36 to 6 to change the town name to Rogue River to advertise the river and to attract tourism. Back in Davis Evans' time, the river crossing was called Tail Holt because the way to cross the river was by getting a good holt on your horse's tail and swimming across. Owned by the family of Kendall and Nancy Birdsall, the Rogue River Press is a weekly newspaper with a dedicated staff of local writers, designers, and photographers. It started out 2012 by announcing the year-long celebration, a century of hometown pride. In March, it announced the Centennial Party with its Whiskerino, Chili, and Pie Bake Off contests. Chili was served by Sue Smith and her staff at the community center. Folks were entertained by the River Bells, the Rogue River Playboys, and by cowboy poet Ron Ratliff. Then came Rogue River's first ever Whiskerino, a hairy contest emceed by Mayor John Bond and Emily Purdy Cox of the Wolf FM 105.1. Thank you guys so much for coming out. So what's our next order of business, Mayor? I think we're gonna do our Whiskerino. Really? Already? Yeah. Are you ready to shave? Yeah. You want to get this over with so you can shave. Okay. That's why we howl on the wall. You are our freestyle winner of our Whiskerino event. Congratulations. Thank you. I knew I killed. The champion Whiskerino Whoa. is the sheriff. The second biggest landmark in town is the Big Double R. It started out as a homecoming game tradition by the high school letterman's club in the 50s, a single R drawn in lime. In 2010, Ross Chapman and a Grace Baptist Church group turned it into the Double R.
Ray's is a major community hub where you'll find a beautiful display of fresh produce and meats, fantastic roasted chicken, a video store, and the friendliest faces around. Another community hub is Main Building Supply, known for its can-do crew and owned by the Yan family. Lucky customers sometimes get to hear Darren and his boys play in the store. The Rogue River Fire District provides fire protection and an ambulance service in northwestern Jackson County. In a demonstration during Rooster Crow, a fire department team skillfully extricated volunteer Serene Austin from a wrecked car. They use tools like the jaws of life and a sawzall. Each firefighter is highly trained and wears gear weighing about 50 pounds. And there they go. Let's give them a big round. Big round of applause. The takeoff of Mercy Flight's Eurocopter from the fire station's open house is always a big hit. The nonprofit air ambulance service saves lives by quickly getting patients to trauma centers. The nonprofit Rogue River Greenway offers a world-class bicycling and pedestrian experience, as well as providing additional parks and public access areas to the river for picnicking, fishing, and family recreation. Beginning right under the Depot Street Bridge, the trail heads east toward the Valley of the Rogue State Park. It will eventually span about 30 miles from Grants Pass through Rogue River, then on to Gold Hill and Central Point where it will connect to the 20-mile stretch of the Bear Creek Greenway. One of only 50 remaining covered bridges in Oregon, the Weimar Bridge is just north of Rogue River. Originally built in 1892, it's on the National Register of Historic Places. It collapsed in 2003, but was rebuilt in 2008. It's a favorite rally point for bicycling groups and hot rod clubs. It's also served as a wedding chapel the first couple to be married inside the bridge was Bruce Sund and Cheryl Martin in 1991. Evans Creek flows south from Weimar towards Palmerton Park in the city of Rogue River, where it flows underneath the Skevington Bridge. The bridge connects Palmerton and Anna Classic Bicentennial Parks. Orrin Palmerton, a veteran of the Spanish-American War, started developing the land as a nursery in the early 1920s. The Arboretum's five acres now feature more than 70 varieties of trees from all over the world. They include large coastal redwoods, pines from Japan, a monkey puzzle tree, cedars from the Mediterranean, and beautiful dogwoods. The Woodville Cemetery was established in 1889. It's a peaceful, beautiful sanctuary that reveals the history of the people of Woodville, Rogue River, and the Evans Valley. With the rebuilt city jail in its backyard, the nonprofit Woodville Museum exhibits Native American, pioneer, and 20th century artifacts, along with hundreds of photos of the Evans Valley and Rogue River, formerly known as Tailholt and Woodville. 
The grounds include a replica of the town's original bandstand and a blacksmith shop. On the last weekend in June, the 59th annual National Rooster Crow drew over 10,000 people to the city. The first event of the weekend was the 5K Fun Run and Walk, starting at Beck Field. 157 runners took off from the starting line for the 5K race, followed by 48 walkers for the two-mile walk. Drew Jordan, who runs for Washington State, took first in 15 minutes and 23 seconds. Second was J.J. Moses at 15.31. Janelle Ralph took first for women in 20.03, followed by Giovanna Mariquim at 20.18. Next up was the Rooster Crow Parade. The entire Neathammer clan, a pioneering family that boasts nine generations in the Rogue Valley, served as Grand Marshals. Over 60 entries made up the grandest parade of them all, taking an hour and a half to pass Depot Street in Maine. The theme was a century of hometown pride, and it showed. Sponsored by the Rogue River Press, the Art in the Plaza show was right next to the reviewing stand. As the Friends of the Library held a huge book sale downtown, several streets around the intersection of First and Pine were blocked off for a fabulous street fair with a carnival atmosphere. There was great food, games, arts and crafts, and jewelry. The National Guard's climbing wall was popular with some very brave kids. And then came some fine performances. And so many good things in life are free. I've taken some for granted. Then came the human crow. Good job. The Rooster Crow started in 1953, the year the first Chevy Corvette rolled off the assembly line. It was Shade Coombs' idea. He had heard about Welsh coal miners celebrating holidays with rooster crows. A judge is posted by each caged rooster, and whichever bird crows the most number of times in 30 minutes wins. On Sunday, the last day of Rooster Crow, there was a spectacular display of restored classics and colorful street rods. The Rooster Crow Car Show has been produced by Ralph and Ellen Campbell of Alexander's Framing since 2001. The MC this year was Chuck Benson. For both young and seasoned car buffs, this was the sparkling highlight of the Rooster Crow weekend. On August 4th, Rogue River's Accordion Club serenaded the crowd of 400 at Palmerton Park at the Centennial Picnic. The Kiwanis Club made cotton candy. Chefs from the VFW manned the barbecue. Umpqua Bank handed out ice cream. Kids rolled watermelons. The River Bell's red hats dressed up the beautiful Green Park as everyone enjoyed a fantastic picnic lunch.
On September 8th, the City of Rogue River's VFW Post 4116 hosted its seventh annual Patriots Run in memory of those who lost their lives on 9-11. Organized by Andy and Sherry Pruden, it was also a benefit for the high school scholarship fund. Members of the VFW play a big part in the city. On 26 days of the year, including all national holidays, barring rainy days, the veterans dress up the city and the Depot Street Bridge with up to 350 American flags. Over 900 bicyclists converged on Palmerton Park on September 15th for the Ride the Rogue event. It's the major annual fundraiser for the Rogue River Recreational Corridor and Greenway, an emerald necklace of parks and public access areas along the river, all linked by a beautiful bicycle and pedestrian trail. There were rides for all abilities, the Century 100 miles, the Metric Century 65 miles, and the Quarter Century 25 miles. The bike rides offered an extraordinary experience of the natural beauty of the Rogue, Evans, and Applegate Valleys, including a stop at the landmark Weimar Bridge. <laughs> On October 2nd, Waterway Recovery removed a Subaru Outback from the river just opposite the Valley of the Rogue State Park. The car had been driven into the water in an apparent suicide attempt in 2011. The Subaru was lifted from the river by Croman Corporation with a heavy lift chopper, formerly a U.S. Navy Sikorsky SH-3H. Rogue River Press editor Tammy Aznikar was on hand and described the car as looking like a crumpled creature from the Black Lagoon. Nancy Tappan's Evans Creek Vineyard is the only commercial vineyard in Rogue River. It has a fine aspect facing southeast, which is good for growing grapes, and a microclimate that produces superior grapes for wine. On October 14th and 18th, Tappan, along with manager Juan Rios and his crew, harvested 31 tons of Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Cabernet Franc grapes. The entire harvest was crushed at Ted Gerber's Forest Vineyards in Cave Junction, Oregon. Forest has included Nancy's grapes in its fine wines since River offers some of the best fishing in the Pacific Northwest, with steelhead runs in the summer and the winter, Chinook springers in the spring, and Chinook and coho salmon runs in the fall. Fish can be caught with fly, plug, and bait, in waders, from the riverbank, and from boats. To get away from it all, there's nothing like rafting, tubing, and boating on the road.
The Rogue River Half Marathon hosted mature athletes in February, but the name of the game in Rogue River throughout the year is youth sports. The homecoming game in 2012 will never be forgotten. With the game tied 6-6 and only a second and a half on the clock, Andy Valencia connected with homecoming king Seth Gretz for the win. Let's see that again! The Rogue River Chieftains cheer was fear the spear and the Bonanza Antlers got the message. Hi, I'm Paul Young, Superintendent of the Rogue River School District. Children growing up in this community have opportunities to play in sports, be involved in all kinds of activities. Our education is high quality, it's personalized, and we endeavor to provide for our community the leaders of tomorrow. Dave Earhart was honored in 2012 as Outstanding Citizen of the Year by the Rogue River Weimar Community. His daughter, Allie, became the all-time leading scorer in the history of girls basketball at Rogue River High School. A popular and effective leader, Mayor John Bond finished his last term in early 2013 due to term limits. Asked what makes Rogue River great, John would say, it's the people. Tammy Asnikar, the brilliant, insightful editor of the Rogue River Press for three years, would leave the newspaper in early 2013 to go on the road collecting material for writing stories and books in the style of CBS journalist Charles Kuralt. City Deputy Recorder Carol Weir was honored by the Kiwanis Club for 30 years of service. She's played a key role in organizing city-sponsored events. Wanda Nesbitt is a leading volunteer in the city. As the director of the Rogue River Mural Society, Wanda has spearheaded the effort to beautify the town and to preserve its history. In May, honor student Katarina Smith was named Miss Rogue River at the Live Oak Grange. Fellow scholarship winners were Hallie Gibson and Kendall Strickland. Cheryl Martin Sund has written the definitive book on Rogue River, full of historic pictures. She's currently working on a new book on the history of the Evans Valley. The people of the city of Rogue River took great pride in celebrating their centennial year and looked forward to a brilliant future.